hi in today's lecture we will see about the different types of implements used for tillage and we will see about the primary tillage implements in detail so what are agricultural implements so implements or tools which are used to carry out agricultural practices in the field they can either be before you cultivate in the field or during cultivation or even when there is no cultivation or agricultural activities going on in the field such implements are known as agricultural implements so there are five types based on use so we have irrigation machinery soil cultivation implements planting machines harvesting implements and miscellaneous agricultural equipment so irrigation machinery includes pivotal irrigation systems pump units micro irrigation systems etc soil cultivation implements include tillage implements cultivators plows harrows etc planting machine include seeders uh, transplanters etc harvesting implements include harvesters combine harvesters trailers diggers pickers etc miscellaneous agricultural implements include hay makers shredders loaders and other implements or equipments used for miscellaneous agricultural activities so some examples of farm equipments are given in the coming slides so the first is a tractor so in tractor there are different types of tractor we have the two wheel drive tractor we have the four wheel drive tractor and we have the two wheeled tractor in a two wheel drive tractor the power is supplied only to the rear wheels whereas in a four wheel drive tractor both the front and the rear wheels are supplied with the power from the ic engine then we have the front end loader the back hole loader the back hole loader and the front end loader are generally used for excavation purposes for uh, preparing the land for land leveling etc we then we have the cultivator which is also a tillage implement a secondary tillage implement we have the culti packer so the culti packer helps to prepare the nursery seed bed uh, it helps to level the nursery seed bed and also place the seeds in the nursery plow so there are different types of plows so here you can see a moldboard plow driven by a tractor the next is harrow harrow is a very commonly used secondary tillage implement then we have sprayers sprayers are used for spraying fertilizers or any other chemicals in the field then we have the irrigation system so here we can see a drip irrigation system installed in the field then we have the seed drills seed drills are used for placing seeds in the field transplanters transplanters are for tra transplanting the nursery from the nursery seed bed to the main field mowers mowers are used for trimming cutting down grass or pasture scythe so scythe is a commonly used tool for uh, removing stubbles or um, hay or any other leftover uh, parts of the plant from the previous season a sickle a sickle is generally used for harvesting crops it is also used for cutting for, for cutting any vegetables or fruits from trees etc rakes rakes are used for gathering the straw or hay in the field after uh, harvesting balers so balers are used for uh, bundling the straw or the hay in the field after harvesting combines or combine harvester so a combine is a machine or an implement used for harvesting and threshing the grains from the stock a harvester is an as a machine used for only harvesting the crops so threshing will be done separately so here we can see a combine harvester where both harvesting and threshing is done together then we have the manure spreader so it is a machine or an implement used for spreading manure in the field it can be tractor drawn or animal drawn the next is the the mounting of implements to a tractor so there are there are three types of uh, mounting of or attachment of implements to the tractor so the first one is mounted implements so implements which are completely mounted on the tractor they generally attached to the tractor by a three point linkage system 
so they can be raised or lowered using the hydraulic system so an example is a mounted three disc plow second one is a semi mounted uh, implement so here the implement is again attached to the tractor using either a two point or a three point linkage and they are all the implement has wheels and they are partially uh, uh, dependent on the tractor for power supply etc a seed drill implement which is attached to a tractor is an example for a semi mounted implement the next one is a trailed implement so this is an implement which is attached to the tractor by using a draw bar linkage it cannot be lowered or raised since it is not completely attached or it is not uh, mounted on the tractor it is only a trail type of implement so it will it will be trailed behind the tractor as it moves forward so the next is the primary tillage implement so there are different types of primary tillage implements the plow is the most commonly uh, used tillage implement so we will be looking into different types of plows so the first one is the country or the indigenous plow so here we can see a picture showing the country or the indigenous plow now this traditional plow has a body a handle a shoe a share and a beam the share is the sharp part which penetrates into the soil and then uh, we have the body to which the share uh, or the shoe is attached then we have the we have the handle the handle is held by the person who is driving the animal or the cattle to which the plow is attached and then the rope the rope is attached to the uh, the animal at the point of hitch for stability and then we have the beam so the beam is the component which is attached directly to the animal mostly country or indigenous plows are animal drawn the next one is a moldboard plow so the moldboard plow is a plow which can either be animal drawn or tractor drawn some of the most important or the main component of the moldboard are the moldboard the share the frog and the lancet so the share is the component which actually cuts and pulverizes or upturns the soil so there are different types of share different types of moldboard and different types of lancet which we will be looking into in the coming slides so the first one is the moldboard so there are different types of moldboard that we have the stubble type or the general purpose the sod breaker and the slat type in the general purpose type we can see that the curvature of the moldboard is is medium in the stubble type of um, mold board we can see there is an abrupt curvature or the curvature is very less whereas in a sod breaker or uh, in a sod or breaker mold board we can see that the curvature is very long when compared to a general purpose or a stubble type of mold board so the sod or breaker type mold board is generally used for heavy duty purposes a slat mold board is a mold board where the surface has a number of slats or openings this is generally used in a sticky type of soil where the clay content is very high so in sticky type of soil when the soil is irrigated and uh, the mold board plow is used the soil generally tends to stick to the mold board this can uh, lead to an increased draft or force acting on the implement so in order to reduce the force acting on the implement we can use a slat mold board plow so the next one is the the land side so the land side is a component on the uh, the back side or the side uh, behind of the mold board and then the frog the frog is a component which attaches or connects all the different components in the mold board such as the mold board share and the land side and the tail piece is a part of the land side it's an extension of the land side which helps in turning the furrow slice so to the right side we can see the uh, a real time picture of the mold board plow this uh, picture uh, for shows the other uh, components of a mold board plow uh we can see the mold board uh we can see the heel or we can see the land side and we can see the tail piece the frog and then the wing the shin the share the share point so this is the coulter which is actually a plow accessory and then the mold board is attached through the cross uh, to the uh, through the leg it is attached to the cross shaft and then the shaft to which the different uh, mold boards are connected and then in turn the shaft is connected to the tractor using the upper link or the lower link attachment the next one is the parts of the share so the different parts of the share are the wing the cutting edge the share point and the gunnel 
So the shear point is actually the sharp edge or the, uh, the sharp cutting part of the shear and then we have the cutting edge and on the back side we have the gunnel. So there are different types of shares. The first one is a slip share. A slip share is a single molded uh, co metal component. So here the disadvantage of using a slip share in a mold board is that if there is damage or if there is uh, uh, wear and tear of the slip share, the entire component needs to be replaced since it is a single molded component. Next one is a slip nose share where we can see the slip nose or a separate uh, component uh, which is attached to the share. So here even when the slip nose uh, is uh, damaged uh, due to wear and tear, it, it alone can be replaced. So it is more economical when compared to the slip share. The next one is the shin share. Shin share also is similar to slip share except that the extension is for the furthermore outside when compared to the slip nose share. Next one is the bar point share. The bar point share is where the share has an adjustable or a replaceable bar attached to the back side of the share. The next one is the types of land side. Uh, there are different types of land slide. So the base and the size or the length of the land slide, they are categorized into 23 centimeter long, 28 centimeter long, 36 centimeter long and 50 centimeter long landslide. Generally a landslides of lower length are used for medium or light duty operations and landslides which are longer that is 36 centimeters or 50 centimeters long are generally used for heavy duty operations. Next is the plow accessories. So there are different plow accessories attached to the mold board apart from the main mold board uh, and its components. So we have the jointer, the coulter, the gorge wheel, the land wheel and the furrow wheel. The first one is the jointer. So the jointer is a miniature uh, ordinary uh, plow bottom. It is made up of a metal. It is made up of metal. It's a single piece a metal. Uh, it is similar to a mini plow and uh, it is attached uh, to the plow mold board plow the second one is the cool turn of the cool turn is a small disc which actually cuts the furrow slice ahead of the plow bottom so we can see that the cool turn is in front of the mold board plow the next one is the disc plow so the disc plow is a plow where a number of discs are connected to a common beam or a common axis so each disc is made up of steel and it is of 60 to 90 centimeter dia and the discs are generally made up of uh, heat treated steel of thickness 5 mm to 10 mm thick uh, 10 mm the concavity of the uh, disc is about 8 centimeters uh, for a smaller dia disc and 16 centimeter for a 95 centimeter dia disc so the disc is generally uh, not flat it is concave and uh, it is used for cutting and inverting the soil so the disc is generally uh, attached at an angle uh, to the uh, common axis or the shaft so the disc angle is the angle between the horizontal and the uh, the line uh, um, uh, along the central axis of the disc so that is the disc angle the tilt angle is the angle between the vertical and the central axis of the disc so generally disc angle is between 42 to 45 degrees and tilt angle is between 15 to 25 degrees for a good uh, working plow and then we have the scraper now scraper is a device which is generally used for removing the particles which are stuck to the disc this generally occurs when the soil is very sticky or when the clay content of the soil is very high so there are two types of uh, disc plows one is a vertical disc plow another one is a standard disc plow so here we can see a vertical disc plow it combines the principle of a regular disc plow and a disc harrow. So, so in this slide you can see uh, on the left the green uh, implement, green colored implement is actually a standard disc plow. So the setup is similar to a standard disc plow. So where you can see that uh, the discs are generally connected to individual axes. The number of discs vary between 1 to 6. So there are number of axes in the standard disc plow type of arrangement whereas on the right side you can see a vertical disc plow type of arrangement where there is a common axis where to which a number of discs are, are attached generally 5 to 24 uh, discs are, are attached to a vertical disc plow.
the size of the disks in a standard disk flow is larger when compared to a vertical disk flow the concavity is more for a standard disk flow than a vertical disk flow now what is the difference between a disk flow and a disk harrow both seem to look similar but they actually have different uh, functions and the way they are operated the design is completely different a disk plow is generally a primary tillage implement it is used for cutting the uh, cutting and inverting the soil whereas a disk harrow is a secondary tillage implement for further tilling the broken down clods from primary tillage activity so here the size of the disk is bigger in a disk plow when compared to that of a disk harrow and here we can see that the individual disks in a disk plow is connected to the common axis or the stub axis whereas in a disk harrow there is a central axis passing through the different disks so that is where uh, so that is the central axis to which the different disks is connected so this is one major difference uh, um, which can easily be identified uh, when we look at both the implements so in order to compute the radius of curvature of the disks we have uh, uh, drawn an imaginary circle connecting the edges outer edges of the disks disk the lower hemisphere is actually a disk the disk the side uh, view of the disk or the cross section of the disk and the dotted line represents the radius of uh, the circle uh, in which the radius of curvature is to be measured so r is actually the radius capital r is the radius of curvature and the depth of concavity of the disk is t and the radius of the disk is small r so from which we can calculate uh, the capital r which is the radius of curvature so consider the triangle oab capital r square is equal to r square plus h square so h is nothing but capital r minus t so we can consider the entire distance from the central point o up to the end of the or the inner end of the disk to be capital r which is nothing but the radius of curvature so r is nothing but h plus t so h is equal to r capital r minus t so when we substitute the value of h in this equation we will be able to determine the radius of curvature so troubleshooting generally there are a number of problems or issues we face when we use any implement in the field so when we use a disk plow or when we use a, a moldboard plow there are a number of problems or, or defects uh, which, which will arise during operation so here i have shown some uh, uh, defects and the reasons and remedy for some of the problems related to a disk plow so if there is low penetration of the disc in the soil the reasons might be because of a blunt disc or maybe the plow is too light uh, or the tilt angle might be very high in this case the remedy is to sharpen the edge of the disc and to put additional load which will overcome the draft or the resistance and also to check the tilt angle before we start using the implement if there is a heavy draft it means either the disc is blunt or the furrow is too wide in that case we can sharpen the edge of the blood of the disc and then we can also reduce the tilt angle in order to make the furrow of a smaller width the next one is excessive side draft this might occur when there is a improper hitching so hitching of the implement to the uh, tractor or the animal needs to be checked the next one is less covering in this case the scraper might be defective so we need to adjust or replace the scraper the next is uneven furrows so the disc angle the disc angle might not be uniform the bearings uh, which are used for connecting the disc to the central stub axis might be loose or the hitching might be improper so this can be corrected using uh, by setting the disc angle setting the bearings and also checking for the hitching uh, of the implement to the uh, implement to the uh, tractor or the animal so the next one is other uh, primary tillage or tillage implements we have the rotavator so rotavators are actually powerful devices which are used for breaking down the tough soil so there are different types of blades in a rotavator we have the rotavator or uh, rotary cultivator so there are l there are l type blades twisted blades or a straight blade 
the, the L type blade uh, is a blade where the side view is that of L shaped. A twisted blade is a blade where uh, the blade is twisted to an or twisted like a braid uh, at an angle. And then we have the straight blade. The next one is a subsoiler. Now a subsoiler is also a type of primary tillage implement. Uh, it also helps to break down or uh, loosen up the soil to a larger depth. The next one is a ploughing system. So now that we have seen in detail about the different uh, primary tillage implements, we need to know about how we have we can plough in the field. There are set methods or there are fixed methods uh, to uh, determine how we plough in the field. So generally we plough in the field uh, for different depths if the field is leveled. If the field is having a higher slope, we go for contour ploughing so that we we will be able to plough along the contours. The next one is uh, the different methods of ploughing. So the different methods of ploughing are gathering and casting. So gathering is the method where we start from the centre and move towards the outwards. And the casting is the method where we start from the outer and move towards the inner side. The next one is the continuous ploughing or the round and round ploughing. Continuous ploughing is where we move uh, continuously, uh, um, we move out, up and down from one corner to the other corner. Round and round ploughing is similar to gathering and casting. Now, after ploughing, the furrow and the, the, uh, the different uh, uh, parts of the uh, field after ploughing is given here. So, we have the furrow which is actually the soil which is cut and then upturned by the plough. We have the back furrow. A back furrow is, is formed when there is an overlapping of a furrow when we come back or we plough the same area again. A dead furrow is formed when there is no upturned uh, soil in the particular furrow. The crown is the top part of the furrow and each furrow uh, is called as a furrow slice. The furrow wall is the wall uh, along which the soil is cut and upturned. And furrow sole is the base of the furrow to, um, in which the soil is cut and upturned. Next is let some terminology related to plough. So let us look into uh, some of the most important terminology related to plough which will be useful in uh, when we study about the forces acting in a plough. The centre of power or centre of pull is a point where we hitch the implement to the tractor. Centre of resistance is a point where all the different forces acting on the implement is, uh, is it is a point where the resultant of all the forces act. Generally, it lies at about three-fourth the size of the plough. So, the size of the plough is measured from one end of the share to the other end of the share in the last mole board. So, here we can see the center of resistance. Now, line of pull is the line joining the center of pull and the center of resistance. We can see that it is not a parallel line, which is a line which is parallel to the direction of pull. We can see that it is, uh, we can see that it is slightly tilted. It is because of the location of the center of resistance, which is at, ab uh, which is at about uh, three-fourth the size of the plow. Width of the cut is actually the width of the uh, cut made by the plow, uh, which uh, it is actually the horizontal distance. So this uh, picture at the bottom gives you the side view of the uh, plow, where we can see the uh, center of pull, where we can see the center of resistance, and then we can see the line of pull. The pull is nothing but the total force required to pull an implement. The next one is the draft. So draft is nothing but the horizontal component of pull. So here I have included a picture where an implement is pulled by the pulled by an animal. So here this the point uh, where the implement is attached to the uh, animal is called as a hitch or the center of pull. So from the center of pull we can see that there is a tractor force of the uh, animal. So I have drawn the forces separately. So this is the actual uh, tractor force of the animal and I have resolved the components into horizontal and vertical. 
and to the right you can see the effective implement draft resistance force since every force has an equal and opposite force for the tractor force of the animal we have an equal and opposite resistive force uh, imp imparted by the implement which is attached to the animal so i have resolved the horizontal and vertical components of the resistive force which is nothing but the draft now the horizontal component of this resistive force or draft is known uh, or, the or the horizontal component of the force is known as draft it is generally represented as p cos theta with theta being the angle between the line of pull and the horizontal so if the power and the speed is given we can calculate the draft using the equation power is equal to draft into speed uh, divided by 75 if the power is is given in horsepower if the uh, angle between the line of pull and horizontal is given we can calculate the draft with the equation d is equal to p cos theta side draft side draft is a horizontal component of the pull which is perpendicular to the direction of motion so we can see the side draft acting on the implement which is actually perpendicular to the direction of motion or the movement of the implement so this is developed if the center of resistance is not directly behind the center of pull so next one is unit draft it is a draft per unit cross section area of the furrow the next one is theoretical field capacity field capacity is generally of two types one is a theoretical field capacity and one the next one is a effective field capacity theoretical field capacity is the ideal field capacity or the rate of field coverage of the implement based on 100 percentage of time at the rated speed covering 100 percentage of the rated width whereas the effective field capacity is the actual area covered by the implement based on the total time consumed and its width generally the effective field capacity is lesser than the theoretical field capacity using the effective field capacity and theoretical field capacity we can calculate the field efficiency so where the effective field capacity divided by the theor field, theoretical field capacity gives you the field efficiency generally the efficiency is less than 100 percentage the next is soil pulverization soil pulverization is the quality of work done in terms of soil aggregates and cloth size generally soil pulverization is measured after plowing the field or after primary tillage activity is done in the field so this can be um, measured using a cone penetrometer the next one is a soil inversion a soil inversion can be measured uh, using the following equation the number of weeds before plowing minus the number of weeds after plowing divided by the number of weeds before plowing into 100 this equation helps us to measure the amount of soil inverted after primary tillage activity thank you